So here's our quarterback progression. Um, and this is the way that I would teach it when we, when we do our freshman camp or when we're, we're talking with our younger kids. This is the way in which I would teach this pass. I always tell them, oh, just hold out one hand and put four fingers up. Okay? If we're running 200, the play's a 200 play, we're running the play to the right. If it's a 100 play, we're running to the left. Okay? If you are, when you get out to your place, you figure out which receiver you are. So let's say we're in a two by two set. So there's two guys on either side. One always has a stretch, two always has a flat, three always has a shadow, and four will have to climb. Okay? So when the kids line up and they're just getting started, they, they're on their fingers. And they're standing there with their fingers out, stretch, flat on the flat. Okay? So now, and I, and I tell them this once they get up to the older levels, that those are our rules, but just like everything else in football, the rules will be broken. Okay? So when we start adding tags, some of the rules get changed and modified, but the concept will <coughs> remain the same. So our progression for the quarterback, <clears throat> as he comes out of his fake, sometimes it'll be a play action play, other times it'll just be a rollout play. We could run it out of both. But as soon as he leaves his fake, his, his eyes go to his stretch. All right, so he's gonna sneak a peek at that kid. If, and we'll show, we'll show some clips where we talk about cushion and different things like that. But if, when he sneaks a peek, he's got the guy beat or he believes he can get the kid beat, he'll just, he'll take a few steps, set up and throw the deep ball. It's, it doesn't happen very often. The stretch is a pass that, you know, we don't throw a lot, okay? Um, but what the, that route does is it gets people out of that space, okay? So we'll, we'll blow the top off of that thing and create some space underneath. Flat never turned out a profit. So as he sneaks a peek, he'll come down to his flat right now. If that kid's open, he's throwing the ball every time, okay? And again, that's just a, if he's got that guy, throw a three-yard pass and, and let the kid run, okay? Next one is the shadow, and the shadow route it will be easier to describe on film, but it's a, a, a route that's at 10 to 12 yards, and it's, it's mirroring the quarterback. So depending on where the route comes from and how the route is run and the, the split, the route might look different each time, but the goal is to get in the same position. Um, then the next progression is to be run. If we want you to throw the climb, the backside route, whether it's a post or whether it's a, you know, a, a real climb route, um, we'll tag it. We'll say 203, climb, look to the climb. Okay, and then that kid would treat that route like a stretch. So as he comes out of his fake, he would take a few steps and then look to the backside to the climb. But it's not a thing where we want the kid to go stretch, flat, <coughs> shadow, climb, and then get killed. You know, we want him to take off. And if, if we see that route open, then we'll throw that route. So the outside, here's just an example. It's be a west, we call this west formation. Two guys in the backfield um, with the slide out to the right. But the stretch, you know, this is 203. Okay, so the, the number one receiver, he's got the stretch, he's got a mandatory outside release, he's saving space. So our normal alignment would be on the top of the numbers, and as he makes his break, he's going to save space so he gets to the bottom of the numbers. If the quarterback makes that throw, he's at least got that seven-yard space to throw into. Okay? The next one is the flat. Again, if we're running 203, 200 protection, we're having this guy as a ball fake. This kid's screaming out of the backfield. This route will change based on the alignment of this guy, and I'll show you that one in a second, but out of the backfield, it needs to be fast, because as this fake happens, these two guys are going to time up, and they're going to be in unison. The shadow route, which is not showing up, is a 10 to 12 yard route that comes across the field like this. The idea with the shadow is to get there as fast as possible. So when we watch film, there are plenty of clips where the kid pushes vertical and he gets stuck on this route, and he doesn't get the timing right. Um, what he needs to do is get off the line as quickly as possible, and then find a place at 10 to 12 yards where he's mirroring the, the position of the quarterback. <coughs> then our climb, and the route will change based on alignment. It'll change based on um, the, the type of coverage that we get. Um, it'll, it'll change based on the bubble of space that we identify. But real simply, if, it's, if there are two safeties up there, he's going to split the difference. If there's one, he's going to try to get right in front of that kid's face. Okay? So here's a different look, just a different formation. Now we have a tight end attached from the back side. We've also taken the guy that's running the flat and moved him out to a slot receiver position. So, again, the routes are the same. Stretch, flat, shadow, climb. The guy on the outside is running the stretch. He's got his mandatory outside release, safe space at the bottom of the numbers. Now we've added a slot receiver and we've put a guy out there that needs to kind of delay things up. So what we'll do is we'll call that just a whip route. So all he'll do in this, you know, this isn't rocket science, it's pretty simple. If he were to run a speed out, he would be about here by the time the quarterback gets out of his break. So with his whip, and the whip will look different, you know, than this line, but he'll try to come inside a little bit and just delay his route so that 
by the time the quarterback gets into a position to throw the ball, he's in a good position to catch the ball. Okay? Again, if he's if he's screaming out of there, the quarterback's a heck of a long throw and a difficult throw to complete. Shadow and climb, both of those are the same. Nothing changes on the back step for a guy that's attached. So now this is the same formation, we just flip sides. Now, now we have a tight end that's attached to the play side, so he's running the flat route. <coughs> Again, he's got to delay his route just for, for timing purposes. If he gets out of there too quick, it's not going to work. So what he'll, he'll have to do on that play is just block down for two seconds. And his, you know, that's just a general rule. It'll change based on the defense, if, you know, and this guy could be back here um, as a, a wing back, which we'll see on film, or he could be attached. But his idea is, you know, get the protection to go down this way, delay one 1,000, two 1,000, and then slip out the flats, again, for timing purposes. If we were to run this play um, as a sprint out play, we might not use that, you know, that, might, that delay might not be as long. So he might, you know, if this kid's just stepping up in protection and the quarterback's rolling out, this kid might just be running more like a speed out. Same play, just a different way to run. Now we start getting into some of the tag stuff. <clears throat> and I neglected to say <coughs> on that first slide with protection. The protection for this play would look a lot like power. You know, if you look at that play, if you were to remove the, the concept of the play altogether, the play might look like power a lot, um, which is kind of the intention of that. But the, front, the guys on the front side of the play would be down blocking. So they would go down, 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 and then we would have close a question mark. It'll look like you know, he'll come flat down to the line, and then he'll kind of you know, run a question mark block. His, his goal here is to get that kid inside of him. So if the defensive end comes up the field, which hopefully he's influenced by the down blocks, he's stepping down from the down block, also influenced by the fake hit this way. We think that as the guard pulls around here, he might have a good shot to pin him inside, which would be a great result for the quarterback who wants to get out to this space. Um, if he doesn't, let's say the kid, you know, has seen the play a hundred times, or he's, you know, he just reads it really well. If the kid screams up the field, the guy will run his mark and just kick him out. He'll run the question mark block and just kick him out. And the quarterback will just know that he doesn't have the freedom just to roll out that way. He'll just set up back here and throw the, throw the route that he can get. Um, all right, so here's how the tags work. The tag, most of the time, will go to the number two receiver unless we've, we've, we've schemed it into the play. Okay, so in this case, we call it 203 bench. 203 bench. Flood concept, the guy sitting in space. So the number one receiver still got his stretch. Now the number two receiver is going to take the tag. In this case, it's the bench route, so he's running the bench. Number two receiver, and, and number two receiver get up to 10 yards and he's going to sit in space in this route. Okay, now we're going to pick up where we left off with the old number two route, which was the flat after the tag. Number three receiver will run the flat and the climb will always stay there. So we've just eliminated the shadow. Um, Number two receiver's gotten a tag. <clears throat> Here's a very similar play, just just uh, you know, sort of illustrating the uh, sorry, illustrating the uh, you know the variety that you, you know depending on where you want a kid to be. Same concept. It's just a flood route rather than a bench route. The kid would be headed towards the sideline if he's got a different um, coverage out there on him. Everything else is the same. <coughs> Just a different option. Again, the tag will go to number two. Number one will run the stretch. Number two will run the tag. In this case, the tag is a stretch, so he's going to run the stretch. There's going to be a lot of space, hopefully, underneath. If not, we might have a shot over the top. Number three receiver, in this case, it's back. He set it out to the flat at three yards, and then we've got the climb there. But again, we're not going to throw the climb unless we've tagged it. So here's an example in which the rules don't apply, and you know that's how we explain it to our kids. Is you know we, we need you to understand the, the the basics of the play, but just understand as we get into uh, game week, we might have to scheme a different way to run the play. So in this case, the grab tag is going to go to the number one receiver. And there's a couple of clips of this that will show. It's a good you know if you if you look out at that one, it looks like a rub route. It's it's a good man beater. Um, so we'll just flip those two routes, we'll run a grab route where he set it in just to try to occupy the space that the outside backer or, or strong safety or whomever it is out here occupied. So he'll get into his space, allow this kid to, to head out that way to run the stretch route, and then everything else remains the same. Shadow and climb.
Another tag. So again, and, and we're um, we're talking off inside zone for most of this stuff. Could we run it um, off of uh, a power play? Yes. Could we run it off of ice? So yeah, we could run. You know, you obviously, you can run play action stuff off off of anything. Blue leg off of anything. Um, so in this case, one of our inside zone tags is Ben. So our back is blocking the end. So if we're running uh, inside zones this way, we're leaving this bubble of space open. This guy's headed over to block the defensive end. So as we run bear, we're running bend on air. We're blocking down like this. Hopefully to influence this kid, he might think that bend is coming back his way. This kid's just gonna slip into the flats. Same play, just a different tag, just a different way to run it. Okay, and then think about the, um, the ways in which you can disguise the play with your formation, with your alignments, with your motions, with your shifts, um, all different things.